Okay, I had one of my online finance students uh, ask a question about solving for the number of payments. And uh, so I thought I'd go ahead and show you a quick way to do this, uh, both on Excel and then I'll also show you how to do it using an equation. So the question is how long will it take to pay off a credit card if it has a $10,000 balance and if the monthly payment is 250 per month and the credit card charges 20.99% APR compounded monthly. Um, so we can go ahead, we could draw the cash flow diagram here. Um, what we could do is we could go here and uh, set the line color or line style to bold. Okay, and then uh, if we draw this out, I'll kind of start right here. So they're giving us ten thousand dollars, and over time. I'm going to skip a couple, I'm going to skip one. We're going to do all these payments, okay? So over time, we're going to do all these payments. Okay, so it's going to look something like that. I'm going to go escape and put some dots. All right, so this just means this goes on like this for a certain amount of periods. And we know that this is a, so we're going to get $10,000. So, so that's a positive $10,000 we're getting. And then we ain't, we're going to have to pay uh, $250. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go Control C to copy this. Paste it here, paste it here, paste it here, paste it here, paste it here. So we're going to have so many $250 payments. And we want to know what N is, right? So let me go ahead and put this in the way the calculator would have it. The calculator would normally present it to you like this way, N. And then uh, R, I'm going to use R instead of I. And then the present value and the payments and the future value. So N is the number of periods, R is the rate, PV is the present value, PMT is a, so this is a, this is a present value on the cash flow diagram. FV is a future value, okay? So I can put these in here. N is what we want to know, right? Number of payments, R is a uh, uh, 20.99 percent and you want to put in percent otherwise um, you want to make Excel know it's 0 0.2099 right and if you put percent Excel knows that and it's compounded um, 12 times per year now notice that I put this 12 separate from the letters and I always have, and I have this separate from the letter because we're going to click on it later. The present value is equal to this, right? The payment. Now, if you're going to put it into your Excel or your calculator, you're, you'd have to, this since this cash flow is pointing down, you'd have to make it equal to a negative this, right? So... Again, if, if you're using math and putting it into an equation, you would use a positive 250. But if you're using, if you're using a Excel or a calculator, you're going to do it, do it negative because it's pointing down. Okay, it's a cash flow out, right? And then the future value, well, you want the thing paid off, right? So the future value is going to be zero. Okay. So. Again, we're going to state what we want to find. We're going to find um, N, the number of payments. Okay, so using Excel for a solution, for a solution, using Excel to solve for the number number of payments, it would be something called N per. Standard, it means number of periods. Okay, returns returns the period number of periods for investment based on a periodic constant payments and a constant interest rate. So we're going to open this up with a parentheses, and the first thing it asks for is a rate. So the rate is here, but that's yearly. So we want to do the monthly rate. So I'm going to divide it by 12 months per year. Okay, and we can use a negative here because we're using it in Excel. So I'm going to put negative. I click on that. 
and the present value is positive because they're giving us money. This is, they're giving us money and then we're paying them back this, right? So this is positive because they're giving it money into our pocket. It's negative here because we're paying money out of our pocket. And then finally, the future value. See how these turns bold every time I, what I, I put, every time I put a comma, I go to the next one. The next thing I want is the future value. And then the type, we're just going to leave blank because this is an ordinary annuity. In other words, it's coming, like we get this money and then we wait a month for the payment. So if we would have paid the payment right away, that'd be called an annuity due. This is an ordinary annuity, so all the payments are at the end of the period. Okay? And then we hit enter. And let's just take that out to two places because of, is, uh, and this would be months. So it would take about 70 months if you round up, right? And uh, how many years would that be? Equals this times, oh, not times, right? Divided by, divided by, man, my, divided by 12. So it would take that many years. And let me put the formula right here above this equals formula text. So you have that. Okay. So the, the using a, a formula, using a math formula, okay, um, you'd have to use this equation right here. It's kind of a complicated equation. But if you're careful as you entered in, it can come out. So n is equal to, so in the numerator we have the natural log. And then the payment, now remember this has to be positive because we're using it in, the, using it in, the, in a math formula. So I would just go ahead and click on this, okay? Divided by um, parentheses. And then what's next? Uh, the payment, so it's going to be this again, minus the present value of the annuity, which is going to be this, and it's going to be times the interest rate, which is this, but remember it's got to be monthly, so i got to divide it by 12, okay? I'm going to close the parentheses and close the parentheses for the, for the, for the numerator, and then, and then next thing I'm going to do, so you have to close it twice. You got to close it for whatever is in the denominator of this part. And see how there's two parentheses right here? So you got to put those in. And then the natural log of 1 plus, again, it's going to be this divided by this. And close the parentheses. Okay, so I just followed that formula very carefully. And the other thing you want to do is... Um, we could copy the format here because it's not dollar. So I'm gonna hit this. I'm gonna click on this. I want this format. I'm gonna hit this little format printer and put that there. Now let me go ahead and put the formula for this so you can see it equals formula text. Okay. So, um, so those are the answers. Uh, I think the two places students usually make a mistake is they forget to divide by twelve number one and number two if they try to do this you know they get confused between using a positive or a negative just remember all the numbers are positive if you're using math if you're using your financial calculator pretty much any financial calculator require that to be negative because it's coming out of your pocket but math ignores the direction of the cash flow so you just use it positive when you're using it for math so hopefully that helps thanks for watching oh by the way if you like this video uh, go ahead and subscribe. Or if you want to subscribe to my channel, hit the picture. If you like the video, make sure you hit the like sign. Leave me any comments if you want. Thank you. Bye.